Oh, and just so you know, I'm not kidding. That genuinely did kill him. Having killed the agent and deciding there might be some repercussion, our heroes decide to make a break for it and go to Harry's cabin. Meanwhile, the remaining agent goes inside to see what happened to his colleague. The remaining agent, Agent Haver, goes to Fisher to tell him exactly what's happened. And this leaves the police chief unable to contact either agent, prompting him to ask this poignant question. Where are those clowns? They would probably cheer me up. So as I need to save time for the final fight, here's a summary of the next few scenes. If Fisher finds his girlfriend to be dead, he then flips his acting switch to over. Then he goes to the house where Harry was keeping Mike and Lisa. Then he finds a picture of Harry outside his shack, which he then randomly high-fives. Then he gets his goons ready for a road trip, where he plans to take the money from Mike. Then it turns out that Haver isn't corrupt, or he might be, but he's regretted the decision, or something. And he leaves a note for the police chief telling him what Fisher's up to. The heroes arrive at Harry's shack and begin preparing the place for an assault. Well, they prepare the front, at any rate. They dig something and they put up some trip wires. They even spread some... Harry, what is that? It's kind of like oatmeal. It helps the gasoline stick to your ribs. <coughs> oh, I always wondered why I had those warning labels on it. <laughs> Still, this is not as bad as the other cereal I bought. We then get an overly long scene with the villains when Fisher decides to take care of the two goons who failed him earlier. Hey, do you mind getting out of the car while I shoot you? Okay. This prompts an incredibly real execution effect. But how are they going to get rid of the bodies? I don't know, but the film's about to go into painstaking detail about it. A few scenes later, and we find ourselves back with our heroes. Mike and Harry don't want Lisa staying with them in the place that they've set up specifically to be safe, because it's too dangerous for her. Instead, they make her go and sit in a shed on her own, where they can't defend her. Oh, and it's also time for another brilliant hugging scene. Will this one be any better than the last? I promise. I'm coming back. Please don't. Anyway, with that heartwarming moment out of the way, the moon shows up for its obligatory cameo, just as the bad guys start to arrive. To be honest, I just go ram the flimsy shack with one of the many vehicles I have. But then again, I guess that's why I'm not a Saturday morning cartoon villain like this guy. In a rare moment of intelligence, Fisher orders Officer Haver to gain access to the shack and kill the people inside. An order which would prevent casualties on his side. I'm in this movie too! What's the betting here that Officer Haver will go inside and then there'll be a couple of gunshots and he'll stagger back out before eventually revealing that he's dead? Oh look, a couple of gunshots then he staggers out before revealing he's dead. What a surprise. Cop! Just give us the money and we'll go! Just like the original deal! I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. And so with Haver dead, Fisher and his men begin firing at the shack. However, with a lot of firepower and the awesome explosive power of oatmeal, Mike and Harry are able to kill most of the goons. Literally half of the group are killed within minutes of the opening of the firefight, and seeing this... Richardson? Richardson! ...decides that a tactical regroup might be the best strategy. I knew you were nothing but a pussy. I'd much rather be alive. <laughs> I'd much rather be alive, would you? If you want to regroup, then fucking regroup! Richardson? You think you're smart? But you're not. What? You're not smart. You of all people should know that. You can't leave me. Or Jack.
Ouch. Guess he wasn't smart. He probably should have seen that coming. Although, that's really not cool for Fisher to just say that. Like, to kill a man and to call him not smart. That man is the devil. The devil! Does anybody else want to leave? Me. Nee. The two remaining goons are just shooting the lights to prevent being shot at a bit more. I fail to see the point because it's such a well lit night and it probably won't reduce visibility, but there we are. It makes about as much sense as anything else they've done so far. The two goons do accomplish their goal of putting the lights out, although it doesn't really affect very much because literally the next scene is this. Motherfuckers! Wait, that's all it took? They wasted like eight people's lives and all it took was just one guy running through the fucking door? Mike manages to kill the final goon and then heads over to try and help Harry who's been shot. Fortunately he manages to dab at him with a light cloth which seems to take care of that bullet wound. However Fisher takes advantage of the confusion to set the house on fire. With the cabin on fire, Lisa then randomly decides to give away her position by trying to shout the head off of the sound technician. Fisher then easily captures her and takes her out in front of the building where he apparently sees something extremely funny happening off screen. <laughs> Fisher then babbles incoherently about replacing his dead girlfriend with Lisa, but Mike tries to bargain with him. Okay, remember that line, because it constitutes one of my biggest gripes with this film. This is, this is not about money anymore! This, this, is, this is about family. So you took my family from me. Apart from the one you shot, of course. Anyway, with Fisher holding Lisa so loosely, Harry finally does what I've been waiting for for ages and shoots Fisher, accompanied by a really witty one-liner. Hey, different! Lisa, come on! Come into this burning building where it's safe! With another ear-piercing shriek, Lisa runs inside, pursued by Fisher, who is immediately crushed by a falling plank. You know, now they come to think about it, it's kind of a lame way to kill off your main villain. The police chief then arrives and we see the building burn and then we fade to black. What a stupid way for three people to die, but at least it ended the movie. Oh god, it's fading back in! It's the last body, sir. Yep, those three morons roasted for sure. Is there anything you want us to check on before we leave? No, everyone is no, definitely guess, dead here. Anyway, we hear the police leave and we pan to the wreckage where our heroes definitely died and... Oh, God, no. They lived? Are you kidding me? Oh. <coughs> oh, yes. Uh, <coughs> cough, cough. Oh. It must have been really inconvenient living in a basement under a huge fire for an entire fucking night. Yeah, and of course, they all survived and are fine. Even the guy with a bullet wound that was left untreated seems to be perfectly healthy. And to make matters worse, we're finally about to hit the stupidest part of the movie. And what is this? It's called money. How's the Caribbean sound? He had the money all along? He had the money all along? What? The fucking... I got raped for nothing, but we're rich, so who cares? This changes everything and somehow makes a bland character even more unlikable and probably the biggest villain in this film. But are we going to acknowledge this? Hell no. And even after this, the film refuses to end. You think this film has gone on too long? Well, check this out. <laughs> 